everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and I am here, as always, with Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. You want to talk about Better Call Saul and get it out of the way? <gasps> and then I'm going to talk about group coaching. <laughs> okay. All right. But Better Call Saul is exciting. Yeah. So have you been watching it? No, I haven't. Are you waiting? Are you waiting for all the episodes so you don't have to wait? <laughs> I am. I am. Do you know why? Because, oh my gosh, House of Cards has totally oh. spoiled me. Yeah. Getting all the episodes at once. I now don't want to take in any other bit of entertainment. Where you have to wait. Yeah. Where I have Brad's to wait. the House of Cards too. Yeah. Um well it's a great show. It will not disappoint you. Is it um, how does it I mean really how does it compare to Breaking Bad? It is obviously for those who don't know Better Call Saul is the spin off of Breaking Bad that follows the uh the exploits of uh his attorney Saul it's, Goodman. It's fantastic. I mean these these, uh, and this is just my opinion. I mean, if you go on the internet, you're going to see all kinds of stuff, but I would say the majority of the people that, that liked Breaking Bad also really enjoy, you know, call, better call Saul. It's a prequel. So it's, he's not Saul. He's somebody else. And, and I mean, I'm not going to go into that, but it's just really interesting. And, um, what wait, fascinates- wait, wait a minute. He's, he's not Saul. Not yet. His name is not Saul. Uh-uh. There's like an identity twist. It's yeah. the same guy, right? I mean, oh, yeah. it's the same human. Yeah. Wow. Right, but I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, give it away because you nuts. need to watch. Now, oh, Nikki. So, for entertainment purposes, one of the podcasts that I've been listening to is the Better Call uh Saul podcast, and it is fascinating because Why? you get to listen to all of these like uh, Vince Gilligan and the actor who plays Saul, Bob I'm sorry, I'm going to really crush on all of their names because I don't know all their names, but Kelly is the host and she's one of the editors and writers or something. I don't know. But anyway, um, basically, this podcast is all of these brilliant people talking about the show and how they created it and all of this back scene stuff and how they made decisions on certain, you know, certain scenes and music and the, the, the actors come on and, <laughs> and talk about their experience. And it is just the most fascinating, like, you know, podcast to, to hear, to, to, to see how this all like comes together. It's re- I want to go back and, and actually watch the shows again because, um, yeah, that you feel like you've learned more about how they I've pull them together. More. Yeah. 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 But these writers, uh, for the, you know, for this whole series for Breaking Bad and for, for Better Call Saul, I mean, they're brilliant. They are, everything is so thought out and, um, and it, it's just really clever and, uh, I'll tell you one thing, you know, in Breaking Bad, you don't really have a connection with Saul as much as, I mean, you do in the sense that he's funny and he's kind of just a slimy lawyer and, you know, he's getting these people off and he, you know, he's clever, right? So Mm -hmm. you you like him, but you don't necessarily have a great sense of loyalty to him or whatever. But um, in Better Call Saul, like, I love this guy. Like, (laughs) he, you root for him and you like, you fall in love with him almost immediately. Well, I, I think it's, it, you know, it's a funny thing. Bob Odenkirk, the actor who plays Saul has been around for a, a yeah. long time. Right. Uh, and, and, uh, he's a fantastic comedian and writer and he is just, he, he is, he's just great. I mean, from his work on Saturday night live to late night with Conan O'Brien, get a life, uh, Dennis Miller, Mr. Show with Bob and David. I mean, there's just, he has created so much great comedy that most people don't know about. I love that Breaking Bad and now Better Call Saul have given him such a, a high profile platform as a as a lead actor. He is just funny. So yeah. great talented guy. Yes. And it's funny to listen to them in the back, you know, in, on the podcast because they're totally funny and and uh <laughs> you know, their real personalities really come out. I mean, it's just it's awesome. It's yeah. really good. So if you're looking for entertainment, I mean, you know, just pure entertainment, uh Better Call Saul is an excellent um spin-off from Breaking Bad, and I totally understand uh Pete why you would want to wait. <laughs> yeah. Because it is it is uh there's been a couple episodes where I'm just like, "Oh man, I just wish I could just, you know, get on Netflix and and yeah, just flesh that. it out. One right. more show, one more show. Oh. Um, but I have to wait. <laughs> well, it's good. It's good stuff. 
So yeah, I, that's what I've been doing. Did you did you ever watch How I Met Your Mother, the sitcom? I watched at the beginning of it, but then I, I lost interest and never really finished watching it. All right. Oh my gosh. I watched through season seven and then took a long break. And I just went back and finished eight and nine and the show ended after nine. And I just have, if you haven't watched it and you're interested in watching it, plug your ears uh, because I'm going to spoil it because I'm so wrecked by it. Oh. He meets the mother. Season nine is all about their relationship. And then the last two episodes, the mother dies. The well, mother Don't we know that, though? Because dies. that's the very beginning of the show. I don't you remember know she's that. She's not there. Well, she's not there, but we don't know why she. Oh. Like, she might I be see, just I not in the I room. Always, yeah, that's true. I always kind of assumed. You did? I yeah. never assumed that. I am. I must be not wired right because I, <laughs> I know I'm not the only one who didn't assume that. And of course, it, it, you know, that, then it, it ends and it supposedly wraps up with a nice bow. And as an older man, now he ends up with the right person. But oh my god. Was gosh. the mother not the right person? Well, the mother was the right person, but then she died. So there had to be another oh, right person. So there had to be another person yeah. that was right. Yeah. So okay. he ends up with Let's another see. person that we'd known on the show in the character. <laughs> Got so it, it was know, the last please. two seasons were really good and and yeah. I really enjoyed it. My I was I have to admit there were a couple of times I choked up a little bit. Aww. Just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. I mean, let's not go overboard. <laughs> All right. All right. All so, right. We're, we're, so we're we're not talking about TV anymore. No, not anymore. It's uh, a it's a digital episode this week. Yes, but before you that. do that, I got to just group coaching. Well, well, this is the, it. This okay. is it. This last is it. Time. Yeah, in fact, Actually, the deadline was yesterday because this will be on Monday, but um, I'm just going to say I'm going to be okay with this, that if you really still want to be a part of the group, just make sure you register today and I'll let you in. All right. So, All right. Uh, but I got to I gotta put that out there um, that, yeah, the deadline is has passed. However, today, today only. Come For those in. listening who have registered, congratulations. Yes. And you'll be finding out more. In the coming weeks. <laughs> if you haven't already, because I've already gotten actually um, in touch with some of the groups that I've already been able to form. So uh, awesome. you may hear from me even before that that last week if, if, if I have the group formed. So, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. It's All right. Fun. All right. So before we start talking digital, head over to TakeControlADHD.com. Register for the uh, group coaching. Uh, subscribe to the show. You can just uh, enter your email address uh, in the, the box on the website, and uh, it'll make sure you don't miss a single episode of this very show. You'll just get a little email each week that says, hey, new show. Here's the link. Uh, and then, uh, you know, find us on Twitter and Facebook at Take Control ADHD. We'd love to uh, hear from you. You can call us at 503-664-4ADD and get your questions on the show. We would very much love to hear from you. So, all right. That's all the old business. New, new business. business. New business. We're like in a board meeting. I need a gavel. Exactly. Better with a gavel. So last week we talked all about uh, uh, about, uh, about the, you. the uncertainty and doubt, fear, uncertainty, and doubt that comes with uh, uh, with you know learning big things about yes. yourself. And I got Thank all. Thank you again for sharing. Well, you're very welcome. And you made a point. You said, "Hey, what about uh, what are these systems that you put into place when I was in my valley of rage and despair uh, in order what to pull out of it?" What was your first step? <sighs> I said, I don't, I, it's been long enough that I don't quite remember, but I do know, I, I remember that, um, well, I can tell you about the systems that I have now that have emerged from those, from whatever I had done then. Pick and, one system. Well, one okay. One system to talk about, because so, we don't want to overwhelm people. No, we don't. So I'm actually, I think I'm going to talk about uh, two, and one of them is going to be really much, much quicker, and it's even more technology related. Uh, so the first one I'm going to talk about is writing. One of the problems that I had before was I was not a very uh, committed uh, note taker, right? I would take notes uh, and then forget about them, right? I didn't and are you talking about note taking like in what? A meeting, a conference? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Meetings, kind of meetings, okay. like, you know, things that I need to remember coming out of out of meetings, things I need to write down to, to you know. Uh, tasks and, tasks stuff like and that? things like okay. that. Right. And I would try to just cram it all into my head. And I had this, you know, I, I love getting things done. And so I fancied myself, um, you know, a GTD guy. I knew all of the rules of GTD, but I, I didn't really follow them. And so, um, my, well, I followed them, but only t so far, right. There was this big well, gap between, because let me ask you about that. Yeah. Did you think that because there were too many steps in GTD or like what, what where was the, the break off point where you kind of stop following that. Well, it was the gap that exists between documenting what I have to do, right? Actually 
making notes and dumping them into my trusted system. So I had this trusted system that would very often just get empty because I would eventually work through everything, uh, eventually, but I was not putting new things in because I was keeping those in my head. Got it. Right. And one of the things that I had to do to get over that was to learn to take better notes. And we've done whole shows uh, on, you know, mind mapping and, and Evernote. You know, Evernote taking notes. And so, um, and, and my own note taking sort of systems have evolved uh, over the years and the tools that I use to take notes have evolved over the years. But right now I'm, I'm using, um, I'm still mostly a field notes, Evernote guy, right? Uh, I use field or Moleskine, you know, field notes, Moleskine, Evernote. So I have this pocket field notes we talked about, I think a couple of weeks ago, how much I love these little pocket field notes notebooks because they're small. And what's so nice about that, they fit right in my, in my like back pocket or my breast pocket, and I can just take them out and make quick notes. But then what do I do? This is where I would always run into the problem before I would have a fancy notebook and I would take notes and then I would put it on my desk and not do anything with it. Well, you know, as technology changes, uh, so do processes. And so now I go to a meeting, say, and I take a, a couple of pages of notes. They have to-dos on them, et cetera, et cetera. I go back home. I put them out. And I open the notebook on my desk, and I take a picture of it in OmniFocus or Evernote, mm -hmm. either one of those tools. If it's a bunch of to-dos, then I take a picture of it in OmniFocus. And then that becomes a task right then and there that's going to remind me, not only is this something I have to do, but here is the reference material that I need to use it. Now, I used to get all caught up on like retyping and OCR, make sure that I could, you know, am I, is my handwriting good enough so that it, the computer can read my handwriting? And that, that's, that's brain damage, right? All right. I need to know is I need to be able to look at those notes because that will trigger enough work for or enough for me to be able to get to work. And, and so that was a big lesson for me is learning not to get caught up in the brain damage of, of technology, of the process, um, and, and realize that the tools I needed for me to work quickly and to get into my system quickly were right in front of me. So, so that was, simply just taking the, the to-do list or whatever the notes were from that meeting and taking a picture of it and getting it into your system. Right. And you know, if there are, if there are multiple to-dos on a single page, I'll take multiple pictures of that thing and create separate tasks. And that's right. Each task is going to have the same picture attached to it, but that's okay because yeah. I don't, I don't need to care. That's one of those things I just don't need to care about. All I know is when I get to that task, I'll have the important reference page visible. Right. So right. that's number one. It's just a streamline, you know, getting, getting the stuff that I write over the transom and into my trusted system. And now my OmniFocus is never empty. Uh, it's yeah. constantly giving me stuff to do. And I only have one field notes kind of at a time. And so that's actually not entirely true. I have a couple of field notes that I'm working through, but they all have a different purpose. Um, and so, uh, you know, one, I have a field notes notebook here that is just dedicated to notes on a book that I'm writing. And so, um, you know, ideas or concepts or sketches or pictures. It's just kind of the brain dump for only the book stuff. Uh, and then I have another one that's just my daily sort of to do's and note taking. When I'm finished with a field notes, I do something that maybe this is, this is an area where I may not need to do this much longer, but it's my, my inner sense of completionism that I can't quite get shake. Uh, I do take a picture of every single page in a finished Evernote notebook. And then the, I turn it over and take a picture of the back. Or, so the front and back, uh, for my field notes, notebooks, and I save the entire notebook as a PDF. Um, oh. and so, you know, I, I don't know. It's, I don't know if I really need to do that. I rarely go back to those and, and look through them, but it, it has on occasion, it has happened where, you know, I need to remember, uh, something that happened in a certain date range and all of these field notes are dated. So I know when I was writing in these field notes, so if somebody comes back and says, you know, Hey, you were at this meeting on March 15th and you know, do you remember an outcome? I can go back to the field notes and see. Yeah. Pretty rare. Well, let me ask you this because I know that a lot of times, um, people that I talk to, there, there is a, um, fear that they're forgetting something. So, you know, like they, they, they didn't get everything captured. And so do, do you feel like this solves that fear? Well, I, this just being able to get the notes into a trusted system that, that doesn't necessarily address the fear, right? The fear comes when you aren't confident in your ability to take good notes in the first place. 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like that's a very different problem. And I think that's, I think a lot of people and myself included, um, when you misattribute the fear, um, you, then you're, then you're addressing only a symptom, right? The symptom that you're addressing is, oh my gosh, I'm afraid I'm forgetting something. I, I better get my notes into the computer or I better get, you know, the tasks that I remember into the computer, but that doesn't go back and address the fact that you're not taking good notes and you don't have a very good memory. And the things you do remember are the things that you were hyper-focusing on at the time, which probably skews the weight of the meeting for you. Your memory of the meeting is likely not the, you know, uh, what really needed to be remembered about the meeting. And so I think that's the first, uh, the first step is figuring out, are you a good note taker? And there are some really good videos on Khan Academy that might be worth kind of reviewing just some very basic, like, you know, how do you take notes in a college classroom? Let's review Oxford outlining or Harvard outlining. Let's review mind mapping. Again, we can post a link to the, to our mind mapping episode we did some time back. You know, let's focus on the rudimentary skill of pen to paper before we get to, you know, entering data into a computer. Um, That is fantastic. I think that distinction is really important. I mean, I think that that that's really important. The note taking, are you confident in what you're writing down? So if you're hyper focusing or you aren't getting everything down in a meeting, then what's your suggestion on that? Like, how do you improve that? Here there's a, you know, okay. So there's a crutch. I'm going to talk to you about a technological crutch and that is the live scribe. Have we, have we talked about the live scribe? I don't think we have. I'm not sure. Okay. So the live scribe is a, is a digital pen. It's, I, no, I, I think say, we have. Yeah. It's an analog pen with a digital, a, a significant digital component. And I've, I've thought about the live scribe for a bit and I've been playing with it lately. Uh, they, they have advanced it a lot. So mm-hmm. y- you buy this pen, there are three different models and they all have slightly different features, which is really confusing because the feature differential is not that big. And yet they have three different models and it's just one pen, one pen that does everything you pay for. It, it makes me crazy that there's so many choices. So mm-hmm. anyway, you pick up a live scribe, live scribe pen. And the idea is you get on this paper, this it's, it's custom paper. It's free. You can print out the paper from their website. So you do, or you can buy live scribe journals, um, that, that you can use, but the, uh, so you, you get this special paper and when you turn on the live scribe, it remembers, it's like it, it has a little camera in the tip. So you're writing with real ink, right? But it, the pen is recording your strokes. So then it's amazing. Right? So then when you go back to your computer or your, or, or your uh, iPad, you can, you can sync your notes with your computer and you can do really there cool things. You're right. There's all yeah. your notes. They have a Moleskine live scribe. If you're a Moleskine guy, like they similar to the Evernote Moleskine journal. We have, they have a live scribe Moleskine journal. They have, you know, note shelf is a very popular note on the iPad. So you can take your notes with your live scribe and sync them to your, to your, a couple of different apps on the iPad, including live scribes, uh, live scribe plus app. You can do cool things like pen casts so you can actually rebroadcast your note-taking session to yourself with audio right Mm, so you mm. can watch the strokes appear on the screen uh, as you were taking notes and this is the thing I, i wanted to mention the technological crutch right if you really don't trust yourself if you really feel like if you're somebody who is in a lot of meetings and you have a lot of details that are constantly flying at you you may want to consider this live scribe pen because you can record I was going to say, right? then you can go back and listen to it. And what's really lovely about it is you can go back by timestamp. So you can be on the note page and, uh, you know, on the computer and you can say, I want to go back to this point in the meeting and start playing the audio from that point in the meeting when you were taking notes on the page at that point. So you can see maybe wow. what you missed. So I, yeah. you know, for, for going to, you know, heading off to college for somebody who deals with a lot of just audio meetings, you know, meet where there's just a lot of information coming at you. This is a really interesting way, um, to tackle that from a technological perspective. Well, and gosh, not only college, but I mean, in any, in any profession that you're meeting a lot of different people, or, I mean, even if you just are are meeting one person one-on-one or your supervisor or boss to be able to have that recording. Now, I assume you have to ask for permission and make sure that the other people know that you're recording it. I think that's a best practice. Yeah, I think so too. (laughs) Uh, I think it is for generally for personal use. I don't know how, you know, I I don't know if anybody has ever tested that in the courts, but But um, still, still. that's a responsible thing to do. Yeah. And the live pens are, are not discreet. I mean, they're obviously yeah. live scribe pens. I think there's even a little light they? on them. Okay. So the big daddy, the live scribe three smart pen is $149 and 95 cents. 
um, the um, you can get like sets packages of you know prints and refills and all that kind of a thing. Uh, the Wi-Fi smart pens, the ones that connect wirelessly, are two forty nine, uh, so they get a little bit more expensive. The mm-hmm. they have the Echo line, which is uh, only two gigabytes of memory. Uh, which is 119. So it's, you know, mm-hmm. between 120 okay. and 250, depending yeah. on what you get. And the sets you can get, you can get, you know, notebook paper. And and uh, sometimes when you buy a set, you get a bunch of free paper. And so there are, there are um, a, a lot of different packages you can get. Um, so uh, there are some good options there. I, I think it's it's worth checking out if you deal with this issue in particular i think yes, it's worth yes. checking out so. I, I i definitely i'm going to be recommending that that i know a couple of people that would find this interesting it's pretty cool now i yeah. i did want to talk about another i want to change gears a little bit because the other thing that i would would struggle with is when i would have to read stuff like I was researching books reading books you know uh, business books things like that and you know i'm a huge lover of audiobooks mm-hmm. um and ebooks I love both of these things. I have many, many of them. And and I think I told you I bought a Kindle, right? I tell you I bought a Kindle? No. I did. I bought a Kindle. It's a Kindle Paperwhite. And I bought it because I'd been reading so much on my iPad. And I read a lot before bed, right? So I climb in bed and I grab my iPad. But I had started reading so much of the research that says, you know what? Part of the reason you're not sleeping very well is because you're holding up the blue light from your from your tablet screen that light that that um stimulates led your light brain. stimulates yeah. your brain in a way i mean it's it's not it's one of those things that just it increases the sort of cortisol production i think that's mm-hmm. the way it works increases or decreases i think it increases cortisol cortisol production which is what wakes you up and right. so part of the reason you have trouble going to sleep is that you're staring at a computer screen right before bed mm-hmm. so um you know so the recommendation is we love ebooks but you want to get one that does not have a backlight on it, right? And so I picked up the Kindle Paperwhite. The Kindle Paperwhite has a, it's a, it looks just like a Kindle. It's a touch screen, uh, pretty responsive. It's not the most current version. I got it on the refurb store, you know, but I, I love it because I can turn off the light completely. And one of the nice things about the Paperwhite in particular, the current generation Kindles, they have lights, but they're not backlights, right? They're, they're essentially they're front lights. It's a different kind of technology of, of lighting. So it doesn't like blast your eyes out. But you can uh, still see it. You can still see yeah. it in a dim room. Um, so anyway, I, I've been looking a lot at this. And one of the things that they have with uh, Kindle, now that Amazon owns Audible, I've been a member of Audible for how many? I don't know how many. I've got hundreds of Audible books in my Audible library. They have this new thing called Whisper Sp- Whisper Sync for audio, right? So you can buy a book or, you know, in my case, I subscribe to a book uh, or I subscribe to Audible. I get two books a month. Uh, or if I'm in the Kindle store, I can buy a book. And there's an option on up to, I think, 45,000 titles available now where you can add the other format for just a couple of dollars more to your order. So let's say I just finished, um, you know, I just finished a book uh, by Ron Friedman, a psychologist writing about the best place to work um, in the world. Mm-hmm. So I bought that book on uh, Kindle and uh, for like $3 more, I added the audiobook. Now, no matter if I can get in my car, I can turn on the audiobook. I can get out of the car, come home, sit down in the ca- on the couch and pick up my Kindle. And it knows exactly where I am in the book. It syncs position oh, between audio and the, but but the real benefit for me is in the ability to cr- change formats for learning if there's something i really need to learn and i hear it on audio i can now go right back to the to the kindle version of the book and i can find that position very very quickly and i can reread it mm-hmm. right i can highlight it i can make notes which i find so useful in mm-hmm. in the book now the next edition or the next step here is what Amazon calls immersion reading. If you're on one of the iOS apps uh, for Kindle uh, or and or the uh, Kindle Android or Fire tablet version of the Kindle Reader, they have immersion reading. Where if you have both the audiobook and the uh, Kindle Reader book, you can actually read along. Uh, so you're actually looking at the text and it's being highlighted as the narrator is reading the book to you. Oh, cool. So now we're, now we're triggering both of those learning modes, right? Now we're triggering yeah. both the, you know, I, the, the 
uh, oral learner and the this more of the the uh, visual learner at the same time and i find that super super useful when i'm trying to study something yeah uh, having wow. that repetition of signals really useful so that uh, those are the the two things that i wanted to to share about some of the systems that i'm kind of using right now in order to to cement stuff i have to learn and get them into my trusted system i like it Useful. Very good. Very useful good. and new. Like I didn't know about that pen and, and, uh, I didn't know what you were just talking about with the, that being able to combine both the yeah. visual and the audio. It, audio. That's, it, it's awesome. It makes me really sad because I love, you know, I'm a lover of iBook or of the iBooks tool and the iBooks yes. formatted books. They're so much more beautiful than the Kindle yeah. books. They're easier on the eyes to read, but, but reading at night and, uh, you know, I found I'd, I'd rather sleep than have a beautiful yeah. reading experience. Yeah. And I, yeah. Kindle yeah. is just a wash at sea with typography on their their electronic reading devices. I I I don't know why they they can't figure that. Hire a good oh man, hire somebody good and just make it right, Kindle. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's all I got. Very good. Well, thank you. Well, thank thank you, you, thank you. Very good. good. Good stuff. And thank you everybody for listening. As always, uh, on behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. <laughs>